Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Hello and good morning. Happy Monday. Let's do it. A great week in front of us. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot one here in Alabama. I know that much for sure. And right now I'm sitting in my car looking out at the sky. I just pulled into work. Looking at the sky, it is gorgeous, beautiful, aqua teal sky with the pink and orange clouds, with the sun coming up. It is just outstandingly beautiful. I would take a picture, but uh, the image that would be ruined by all of the power lines in f- <laughs> between me and the sky and the trees, a bunch of power lines running across there. No one wants to see that. Okay. Moving on. We have a great, uh, uh, we have a great lineup. Listen to me. We, I have some stories to share with you, but I would like you to go check out my YouTube channel because I uh, had formerly Rob, uh, TV podcast producer. Uh, he came on and did a live stream with me yesterday it was on x and it was on youtube but of course on youtube you can watch the replay we talked for just a tad over an hour and it went by so fast it was just a really good chat and i appreciate him coming on being on with me for my live chat it was awesome okay let's start off with our stories over here we're going to start with the tragic and try to end light try to okay A woman in Germany has been sentenced to prison after insulting a migrant who participated in the horrific gang rape of a young girl in 2020. The woman has now received more jail time than eight of the nine convicted for the gang rape. Y'all listen to this story. This is from the Republica.com. Oh... I'm sure you have heard of this story from back in 2020. I've talked about it briefly on my podcast a while back when I first learned about it. Uh, Several months ago, a 20-year-old woman in Hamburg, Germany, has been sent to prison after making hateful remarks. Yes, hateful remarks. Towards a migrant who was involved in the gang rape of a child The woman is just one of 140 people being investigated for making harmful comments towards the rapist. This is where we are. They had, I guess they don't have free speech over there. Uh, The horrific, okay, I'm going to briefly tell you about the assault. I don't think she got very much jail time, but she got more than what these dudes, these, these animals received. I don't even want to call them animals. Animals wouldn't do this. The horrific assault took place in 2020 and involved multiple groups of migrant men independently attacking a 14-year-old girl in Hamburg's Stad Park over the course of one night. The park had become a popular hangout spot for the youth during the COVID-19 lockdowns, and the girl had been there drinking with her friends, but they became scattered after police swept the park and broke up groups while enforcing social distancing measures. Confused and alone, the girl was defenseless against the first mob of four predators. The first mob, okay? The men took turns on the girl, repeatedly raping her over an extended period of time. They robbed her of her wallet and cell phone before leaving her, traumatized and disoriented from the first attack and having no method of calling for help. The girl was assaulted a second time by two more men who took advantage of her vulnerable state. Disturbingly, her assailants had begun inviting other men to rape her via their chat groups, gleefully sharing the news that there was an isolated teenage girl in the dark park with no potential witnesses. The child was attacked a third time by a single man and then a fourth time by three more men who dragged her into a bush and sexually assaulted her. Finally, the child managed to break away and ran, 
Though pursued by her rapist, eventually she came across people who recognized her traumatized state and immediately called the police. A total of 11 men were initially charged, but two were acquitted quickly due to a lack of DNA evidence. The sperm of nine of the men, however, had been successfully recovered from the girl's body. Five of the men were in possession of German passports, while the remainder were not citizens of Germany. Among those captured, uh, among those charged, none were German heritage. The rapists were identified as a Pole, an Egyptian, a Libyan, a Kuwaiti, an Iranian, an Armenian, an Afghan, a Syrian, and a Montenegrin. Montenegrin, Montenegrin. I can't. I don't know what that is. The men had a team of twenty defense attorneys arguing their innocence. Oh my gosh! Videos of the first and third rapes had been recorded and shared by the assailants to contacts through WhatsApp, but the videos were deleted before the case could be heard in court. So uh, during the trial, the victim who now suffers from PTSD. As a result of the night of abuse, was called upon to speak about what happened to her. While she recounted her horrific ordeal, the men showed no signs of remorse, and at least one is said to have fallen asleep during proceedings. Good heavens. Oh, however, despite DNA and WhatsApp evidence, eight of the nine men convicted walked free with probation and spent no time in prison at all. What the F? The ninth was sentenced to two years and nine months in prison without parole. Okay, that's good. The case caused outrage, is that right? The ninth was sentenced, yeah. The case caused outrage in Germany, both for the brutally of brutality of the rape itself and the lenient sentences given to the rapist as a result. One of the men had his identity and phone number circulated on Snapchat by furious sleuths. Angered by the news of the case, a 20-year-old woman from Hamburg messaged the number through WhatsApp. The unnamed woman called him a dishonorable rapist pig and a disgusting miscarriage. She added, aren't you ashamed when you look in the mirror? The targeted rapist then reported the woman to police and she was charged with sending him insulting messages the woman has now been convicted and sentenced to a weekend in prison for her remarks meaning that she will have spent more time in jail than eight of the nine rapists in court the woman apologized for her remarks oh hell no and saying she acted out of reflex upon hearing the sickening details of the case wow so there you go that is effing incredible and just outrageous. That's in Germany and it's coming this way. You better believe it. You better believe it. Buckle up, people. It's coming here. And if you don't believe that, you are a fool. All right. So, Troubled Star, moving on to the next story. The Troubled Star believed 90s movie, The Sandlot, busted for chucking dumbbell at neighbor's Jeep. You guys know this movie, The Sandlot. Oh my gosh, it's a great movie. It's a great coming-of-age story for boys, men, whatever. It is just a fantabulous movie. I love it. However, <laughs> fame will do some strange things to people. So, actor Thomas Gury, Gury, G-U-I-R-Y, I'm probably going to slaughter this poor man's last name. Actor Thomas Gury, best known for portraying Scotty Smalls in the 1993 movie The Sandlot, was arrested earlier this month in a bizarre episode during which he allegedly hurled a dumbbell into the windshield of his neighbor's Jeep and then held a knife at his front door. Surveillance, surveillance footage obtained by TMZ shows a shirtless Gury, 43, tossing a 35-pound dumbbell at the wind. That is a heavy dumbbell, trust me. 35 pounds dumbbell at the windshield of his neighbor while white Jeep in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The weight created a large dent in the glass before rolling off the hood of the vehicle. 
Gary then casually sauntered through the neighbor's yard and across the street to his own home like nothing happened. The Horry County Sheriff's Office said the Jeep's owner yelled at Gary that his window had been shattered, to which the former child actor replied, That sucks, man. I'll pay you back. I'm sorry. I'm going to get you back, according to local outlet. Wow. Then in startling security footage taken from the neighbor's doorbell camera, Gary appears to approach the front door brandishing a knife. Cops were called, and then they arrived. They found Gary standing in the middle of the road asking his neighbor about the safety of his wife. I don't know. That is strange. He was booked and charged with three with assault and battery, uh, blah, blah, blah. The incident wasn't Gary's first run-in with the law. In 2013, while living in Hamilton, New Jersey, he was arrested for assault and causing bodily injury on a public servant when he head-butted a cop in a drunken fight at Bush Intercontinental Airport in Houston. Wow. So he's, he's appeared in multiple movies, including Black Hawk Down. I did not know that. And Mystic River, I did not know that. And he's most remembered for his leading role in The Sandlot when he was 11 years old. Wow. So there you go. I hope he's all right. I mean, goodness gracious, he needs to get some help. Y'all, I don't know what happened to my recording. It, I went on and on and on and on after this particular story about the child actor. I did like three more stories. And I had a feeling something was wrong. So after I was finished with my other stories, I went to go, you know, upload it and it, oh, it had stopped. So I didn't, so anyway, I had to come back here and finish it, pick it up. So there are more stories on my X feed that I talked about, but it didn't get picked up here. It stopped recording for some reason. I'm so mad. I mean, I, there was, I, there were a whole bunch of other stories I talked about anyway. Maybe it was meant to be. So question of the day. But please, go read those other stories. They're on my X feed. All right, I'm going to use one of the questions I asked Rob yesterday in this quickie segment. Should spaghetti be spoiled, spooled on a fork, like twisted on a fork, like twisted on the fork, or should it be cut up? I personally like to twist my, I take my fork, stab it in the spaghetti, and twist it, twist it, twist it. That's how I think spaghetti should be done. You know, sometimes I actually use a spoon to help twist it onto the spoon. I mean, I use a fork, but I use a spoon to help it. But uh, well, how do you eat your spaghetti? Spool it onto a fork, twist it, twist it, twist it, or do you cut it? That's the question. I'm just so mad that I spent all that time talking about those other stories and it didn't get recorded. I'm so mad. All right, got to go. Thanks for listening. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.